Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Keep, keep going, you're right. And a special welcome to any visitors. It's good to be here today. Why are we here, do you know? To worship God. Hmm. Where did you get that idea from? We might turn that upside down today. We'll see. Anyway, let's stand, please. <coughs> Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing. Verses from our second reading. The works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Have we anything to confess? Father, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to acknowledge our sins and turn to you for forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in all that we say and do. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. Jesus died on the cross for us. We ask to be made right with you and live in peace. As we receive your promise of forgiveness. Let us live a life of thanks and love to all people. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you 
And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, and by his command, I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So peace be with you. Amen. We have our reading. Let us pray before reading. Jesus, our Saviour, in these readings we hear that you have set us free from slavery to sin. Make us alive by your Spirit and ready to follow and serve you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is found in 2 Kings chapter 2, reading from verse 1. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took him hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's coat that had fallen from him, and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is found in Galatians chapter 5. Reading, reading for verse 1 and then 13 to 25. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brother and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one humbly, another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, Let us keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. 
We stand for the Gospel. Today's Gospel reading is found in Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 57. As they were walking along the road, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You're from Galatians. Christ has set you free to enjoy your freedom. So remain strong in the faith. So we are completely free to do whatever we like. We just heard the man said to Jesus, Jesus, I'm free, I'll follow you no matter where you go. Just free. And that's my kind of freedom, to just follow, wind in your hair, no fixed address, tank full of petrol, the journey is the destination. Just following Jesus, you know, just that's free. That's my kind of freedom. Then Jesus seems to put in a bit of a spoiler alert. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Then it says, to be free is to serve. Well, that's not my kind of freedom. I've been serving all day. It's early this morning, I don't even know what time it is. Two little dogs saying, come on, I want something to eat. I want to go for a walk. I'm serving all day long. Is this the freedom I'm thinking about? We're Pentecostal people. We're Holy Spirit people. We want to serve God. We want to serve Jesus, don't we? It says in our freedom we become slaves to Christ. So freedom by being a slave seems to be getting worse and worse. When I think of a slave, I think of people being punished and made to work hard and to being whipped and all sorts of things. Terrible things. But but I read in Jesus day, being a slave wasn't quite like that. Being a slave of a Christian person was actually an honour. It was a good place to be, a safe place to be. You were included in the family. You were bought. All slaves are bought, no matter what. You were bought, so therefore you belonged. Whatever was part of the family was yours. Paul starts most of his letters very proudly by saying, I, Paul, a slave of Christ. So he's saying Jesus has bought him. And, you know, confirmation, not with silver or gold, but with his holy precious blood. We belong. And Jesus reminds us that everything that is his, he gives to us, because we belong. Especially the right to be with him in heaven, sit, sitting there with the Father. So belonging, being a slave, is freedom to serve, because you don't owe anybody anything. In the family, you don't owe anybody anything. You just serve. People want to come into the kingdom by paying, by doing good works and paying. They think they owe. But that's what grace is, unconditional love. We want nothing in return. Jesus paid the price for his. And when we work this out, everything we do is out of thanks out of fun, out of something to do. What we do benefits others because we're actually sharing what we already have. We're sharing Jesus. So it's all back to front, isn't it? To belong, we are bought with the blood of Jesus. And because we're bought, we belong, and that costs us nothing, zilch. And as slaves, because we're bought, we're slaves, we serve others. We do things out of love. 
out of thanks. Now it even gets stranger. When we belong to Jesus, sorry, when we belong, Jesus serves us. Now here we are, all slaves, and we're being served by Jesus, by God. Does that make sense? Jesus said several times, and it's in several Gospels, I came to serve and not be served. I don't think we've, any of us have got a handle on that. From day one, from Sunday school, we're all told we've got to serve God. Jesus says, you don't have to be served. I feel it's over in the hall. A youth, youth thing, I don't know how old it is, but to serve and not be served. Now I'm not sure if it's right or not yet, we'll work it out. But certainly Jesus thinks, I have come to serve and not to be served. Hmm. It's a big hurdle for many Christians to allow God to serve us. For him to serve us, we have to submit. And don't we hate that word in this, this century? We have to submit to let someone serve us. Our language is, is partly a problem. A long time ago, and I don't know how long it was here, but at some time... Um, it would have been a German speaking congregation would that be right here or the other church maybe but anyway at some time and at that time it didn't say worship 8.30 or whatever it is out on the sign it would have said Gottesdienst 8.30 that's the German word that was used in the stroke of a pen we turned English and we got this worship now which is English worship so we come here to show God his worth in other words, we come to serve God. That's what you all said at the beginning. Jesus doesn't want to be served. God distinct means God serves us. Dienst means serve or service. And Gottes means God. Now there's hundreds of those words in, in German. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you on a few. Because you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it straight away. Tomorrow I'm taking the car to the Autodienst. Eh? Auto Centre? Or what else? What did you say, Carly? A car service. Going to get the car service, same thing. By who? Mechanic. Am I going to do it? Do I go there and tell the mechanic to have, have his lunch? I'll put it on the horse, I'll do it myself. I'd like to, but. He said, no, you know, I do it. You just. All you got to do is pay, really. What about, who knows what schlussel? You know what schlussel? <laughs> I'm going to the schlussel dienst. What would that be? Key cutter. Yeah, I'm going to the locksmith, the key cutter man in the, hall, in the mall, to get a key cut, the keys cut. Now he, he cuts the keys. He does the service to me. He's the key man. What about um, I'm going on a holiday. I'm going to, I'm going to see a flugdienst. A flug. Fly, flug. Flying dienst. An air hostess. I'm going to get on the plane and you know, right from the door. They take you to the seat, put you down tell you what to do, come and check that you put the seatbelt on, if you haven't got it on they put it on for you, get you a cup of tea, all that stuff. They serve you. You don't serve them. It's always one way, this, this goddess deems thing. One more, um, the flager deems. Now not flieger, that's fly. Flager is a nurse. It, it comes around to your home. You know when you need a bit of help at home, you want a shower or something? Those, those sort of nurses. What are they called? Bush nurses or something? Heroes, yeah. That's what a flag in there. Yeah. Imagine if she came to the door and said, look, I'm going to give you a shower today. You'd get in all sorts of strife, wouldn't you? <laughs> God esteems, God serves us. 
And if we still had that sign, it would just change the whole dynamic of worship. Because we're coming here for a service. And what do we get? That forgiveness of sins. We get the Word. We get Holy Communion. We get it given to us. It serves us. Of course, we sing back and praise and give our offerings. But technically, we don't serve God. There's a word in the Scriptures that describes what we do. It's in Hebrew, but I'll say it's cheek by jowl. We serve God cheek by jowl. We serve with him. Um, or for him. You know, Angela Merkel, just before she was, um, you know, lost her power, what's the word, whatever, um, when all those refugees were coming from Turkey, from the Taliban, hundreds, thousands, and turned into millions. And the people were saying, it's too many, you've got to stop. Why are we doing this? And she said, for Christi, for Christ. Doing it for Christ. I think it's the greatest Christian act in modern times, and you probably don't even know about it, but it's a, it's a fantastic thing she did. But I'm just wondering, for Christ, I'm doing it for him. It's almost like I've got to pay him. Imagine if she said, um, um, with Christ, you know, by Christy or something like that. I'm doing it with Christ. We're, we're serving with Jesus. We're doing it together. We're doing it for Christ. I'm not, gonna, I'm not condemning her at all, but that's what she said. For Christy, this, this great humanitarian act. Anyway. Jesus says, I've come to serve and not to be served. And I wonder if the kids that wrote that, and probably looking at you, thought, well, we're going to go and serve, but we just don't want to be paid back. Maybe that's what they thought when they said, serve and not be served. Or maybe they just, to me, got it a bit wrong. We need to be served before we serve. We need to be served. So this is like a service centre, I reckon. But God serves us. And Jesus says it so clearly. I've come to serve, not to be served. And we serve with him. What are the words we hear? Ambassadors, friends, fellow servants, all this sort of thing. Not subjects serving Jesus. I don't hear that language. So we have this freedom to serve and also in this when he bought us with his blood we got freedom from death went to New Zealand a few years ago for a holiday I couldn't help but look at the sheep there's lots of sheep <laughs> but I noticed the sheep it struck me because I'm a farmer and livestock carrier but the sheep were all spread out across the paddocks every square inch spread out not all huddled up in little groups like we see our sheep I thought, what, what is it? How come they're like that? And I saw it over and over again. And then I thought, this is money, my own theory, I might be wrong, but they've got nothing to fear. The fences are more or less like little picket fence things. They use these wooden dropper things. And no dogs, or no wild dogs, I mean. No dingoes. Um, no snakes. They've got nothing to fear. What about, how about our sheep? They all huddle together. One runs, they all run. They're scared of dogs, town dogs, wild dogs, foxes. No foxes, that's the other one in New Zealand. No foxes. Uh, snakes, whatever it is. They've always got something to worry about. So they huddle and always in... If you drive past and toot your horn, they'll run for their life somewhere. New Zealand, they're just laying there. They don't fear death. As being bought by Jesus, we don't need to fear death. Of course we're going to die. Of course we get scared. But the rule, the bottom line is, death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? We know there's a resurrection. We're free to follow, free to serve, and free to speak. Um, that's what we are as Pentecost people. I wonder if we can go out there this week and just think of those... Little word, Hebrew for saying, cheek by jowl. What I'm going to do, I'm just doing it with Jesus. 
not necessarily for Jesus. I'm not serving Jesus, I'm serving him. The most important word in the Lord's Prayer, I believe, the most important word is the simple word, our. And Jesus says, our, Father, that makes us brothers and sisters. So we don't, you don't pay your brother or sister. You work with them. So as you go, try it, see how it works. Let me know. I'm going to work cheek by jowl with Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, help us turn our service and love and devotion to those in need. And in doing so, we will find you there with us. And we pray in your name. Amen. Let's stand and we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated and we sing our offering hymn together. stand as our offering is brought forward. Pray together. <laughs> well, I'll pray. Yep. Almighty God, Jesus willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our sake. Give us the courage and the patience to take up our cross and follow him. Amen. Please be seated and we'll pray for all God's people.
Heavenly Father, help us exercise our rights as your citizens, citizens of your kingdom. Help us put behind our heart for the old ways and take up the gifts of the new kingdom, the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Let us be your ambassadors. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Father, we celebrate with you that Jesus has defeated every evil and death. And while evil still has its dying reign, we look forward with confidence to the time when we live with you with complete confidence and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we stand with all Christians opposed to war. We pray for peace. We pray for cooperation among world leaders. We pray that they listen to the call of peace. And we stand with our Christian brothers and sisters being persecuted for their faith. And Father, we pray that the world, the Western world, can, can cooperate in Afghanistan and help their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, help us manage your gifts so that no one goes hungry or thirsty without shelter. We pray your blessing on our police and medical people and emergency workers. We give you thanks for a safe place of worship. We give you thanks for those who maintain and keep our property and do all the things that churches need, all the volunteers, we give you thanks. We pray a blessing on our Chairman Jeff and Trevor and Warren and for all people who serve. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, be with those who are experiencing loss. Fill their hearts with your love. Be with all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are unwell or in hospital. We pray for healing in their bodies. We pray for our friends and family in aged care. And we pray for strength in those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Father, bless all worshipping communities in this town. Bless the Murray Valley Lutheran community and the way we're trying to reach out to people. Um, bless Bethany Mann as she's training and studying to be a missionary and we think of Murray and Tracy Smith in New Guinea we ask protection over them wisdom in, in Murray's teaching and that they serve with joy Father well, we thank you for the rain it has come in its season we thank you for what we find and mine what we grow and catch for pensions and income and all that we have. And we stand here confidently with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our next hymn.
our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing joyful songs to the Lord. Let's praise the rock of our salvation. Let's worship him with thankful hearts the songs of praise. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, and when he gave given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Paul says, Is not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ? So come for all is ready. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy precious blood, strengthen, preserve the faith of body and in soul unto life eternal. Go in peace. Amen. As a thanksgiving prayer, we pray our start today, Psalm 16. Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say to all the people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all the love. Those who run after other gods who suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. We thank you for the cup of salvation you have given us today. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be grateful to you. And the Lord look upon you with his favour and give you peace. Amen. Let's take a second.